um, part of the body. But we're going to be talking about our mission and, and the values and, and where we're going as a church. What does that look like? And, and today I want to begin uh, by asking the question. You may say, oh, this is easy, right? Uh, but what does it mean to be a member? What does it mean to be a member of a church? What does a member look like? If I wasn't a member of the church, not a Christian, not a follower of Jesus Christ, what would I notice about somebody who was a member of First Church? What are, what are the things that would make them visibly a member of the church? They worship on Sunday. They worship on Sunday. They worship on Sunday. What else? Volunteer. They volunteer. Hey, you know what? I just got to tell you as a group, right? Don't be afraid to talk and don't let Dana take all the answers. Okay? <laughs> but I love that she's jumping in. Yeah, somebody over here. So volunteer. What else? Love Jesus. They love Jesus. Say more. What does that look like? If I love Jesus, smile on their face. Smile on their face. What else? What? Welcoming. And you say welcoming the visitors, but I go. Visitors, how about neighbors? How about where you work? Somebody starts uh, new at your place of work, and as a member of the body of Christ of the church, yeah, we should be visible, right? Not just here, but out there. What else? Say that again. Unified. Unity. I'll put it up here so we can see it. Unity. Unified. We're all together. We care about other people. We care about other people. Care about others. Spread the good news of the gospel. We share the good news. I say we share the gospel. Pray. We pray. What else? This is good. This is great stuff. We share our gifts. Somebody looked at my sermon. <laughs> What else? Study God's Word. Say that. Study God's Word. We study the Word. Back. Love. We love. Pretty good start, right? I know the rest of you are going to do it, so I don't have to say anything. <laughs> Come on, just be honest. So, I think, you know, first thing I'm going to tell you, all of these are right on. And they're all good. And if I were to preach on them today, that would take a whole lot of time. So we would be here until about one. That's not going to work today, is it? we got a graduation at two. So, and I've messed up Aaron because you know, I had pictures before the sermon, but I wanted to jump into the sermon. We're going to celebrate the graduates after the message. So they're relieved because I'm going to have them stand and say a whole lot of stuff. No. But today, um, we're talking about what does it mean to be a member. And I think about it, I go, so often today we want to think of membership as being like part of a country club or a gym, 
right? And, and, and what does that look like, right? You, you go and what do you do? You first all have to pull out your wallet and you got to pay, right? Probably your credit card because they're not cheap at the golf club. Um, and, and, and then as a member, you know, you expect something, right? You expect service, you expect privileges, you expect um, certain things. And, and then as a member, there's certain things that are expected out of you. But that's not the way it is with the church. You see, if you're a member of a place or a club or a gym or something where you pay dues, you expect privileges. And that's not the case here. I, some of you may not realize this. I hate to break it to you, but the chair you're sitting in isn't your chair. And that's not your spot, and it's not reserved for you for the rest of your life. Um, that, I know that comes as a shock for some of us, because we've been, you know, we typically, with the old church, we had certain pews that had our names on it, at least underneath the bottom. Um, just, just, I mean, you know, we can joke about it, but it's kind of true. There were certain people that always sat in certain places. Um, you know, to the point where if you knew them long enough, you kind of thought that was the family view. Um, but that's not, that's not what it means to be a member of the church. And then the other thing we think is that as a member, you know, there's certain things that, you know, we get, right? And I go, well, church is really the opposite of that, right? If you're a member of a church, and last week we celebrated baptism, but we welcomed new members, and we have profession of faith, and that means they're now members. And, and with membership comes expectations. Biblical expectations. God's got some expectations for us. And today I want to just take a, a look today. We're going to turn, if you have your Bibles there, we're going to turn to Paul's letter to Corinthians. And, and we're going to talk about what does it mean to be a member of the church over the next couple weeks. Um, but today I want to just begin with Paul's letter to Corinthians chapter 12. And we're going to begin with the 12th verse. And I invite you to, to listen to these words that come to us from the book that we love. And I know I'm right in the way, so I apologize. So listen to these words. Just as a body, though one, has many parts, but all its parts form one body, so it is with Christ. For we were all baptized by one Spirit, so as to form one body, whether Jews or Gentiles, slave or free. And we were all given the one Spirit to drink. Even so, the body is not made up of one part, but of many. Now, if the foot should say, because I'm not a hand, I don't belong to the body. It would not, for that reason, stop being part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I'm not an ear, I do not belong to the body, it would not, for that reason, stop being part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? But... In fact, God has placed the parts in the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. If they were all one part, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, but one body. The hand cannot, I cannot say to the hand, hey, I don't need you. And the head cannot say to the feet, I don't need you. On the contrary, those parts of the body that seem to be weaker, are indispensable. And the parts that we think are less honorable, we treat with special honor. And the parts that are unpresentable, we treat with special modesty. While our presentable parts need no special treatment. But God has put the body together, giving greater honor to the parts that lack it, so that there should be no division in the body but that its parts should have equal concern for each other. If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honored, every part rejoices with it. 
Now you are the body of Christ, and each one of you is a part of it. And God has placed in the church, first of all, apostles, second, prophets, third, teachers, then miracles, then gifts of healing, of helping, of guidance, and of different kinds of tongues. All are, are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Do all work miracles? Do all have the gift of healing? Do all speak in tongues? Do all interpret? Now eagerly desire the greater gifts. And yet I will show you the most excellent way. Here ends this reading from the book that we love. Thanks be to God. Now I don't know about you, but what did you hear in the midst of those words? You know, I've heard that, you know, and while at times some of us may feel like we don't want to be part of the body, it doesn't matter. We're still part of the body. We're still part. And we're still important. And, 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 then, and then all these other things that he's talking about here, but, but you know, part of the challenge that I see today is we live in a world that's all about independence. It's all about personal preference, our culture today. It's kind of like, I don't know, it's kind of like dating, right? And, 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 and if you think of a dating game, it's like, you know, there's kind of that going on. Um, hey, you know what, I'm going to attend a particular church because, man, they serve really good cookies. And they got great coffee. Preaching's okay. Or you might go to the church because um, you like the music. Everybody say yes. We like the music, right? We love the music. Others might go because they like a certain preacher and his style or they like the place. All of these different things. And, and so we date the church because we're independent. And in, in like dating, I don't know, any of you remember when you were dating? Some of you, it might be hard. But, you know, dating was, you know, you went out a few times, maybe you liked them, maybe you didn't, you weren't quite sure. Maybe you waited a while before you called them. Maybe you waited three months like somebody I know. Amazing that she said yes to go out for that second date. I don't recommend it for those of you that are dating. Um, not, not a good thing, but amazingly enough, um, 35 years later, we're still together. Um, but but those, those things where you kind of, you date and you kind of are hot, and you're cold and you're on and you're off, all those things that happen. And part of it is we live in a culture today where, you know, I think we're always looking for the best package. You're all, we're always looking for something a little bit better, right? It's kind of like you get your first car, and then you want something a little bit better. And then a little bit better. And, and that's kind of the way it is today. Even, even I think, with churches, it can lead to a critical attitude of, hey, I mean, it wasn't everything I wanted, so I'm going to keep looking. And, and that's a reality in the world we live in today. Um, we pick and choose where we want to be, but Paul's saying, you know what, that's not what it looks like. Being a member of the church is understanding that not only is everything important, but, but you know, we need to pick each other up, we need to help each other. And so I think about it, I go, hey, membership means this. A couple of points I'll share with you. Membership means we're all necessary. Now, some of you are sitting here going, yeah, I, I, my day has passed. I go, no, you're still really critically important. You know, you may be a prayer warrior. You don't have to do any of the heavy lifting or move chairs or set up or but that's critically, critically important. Maybe you're somebody here today who has been gifted with a smile. 
I can still remember the first time I heard this passage preached by my pastor. And, and he looked at the, all the members, all the people there that day, and he said, you know, some of you, your gift is that smile and that warmth that brings. You don't realize how important that smile might be to somebody who's had a really rough week. That smile might make all the difference. It might be why they come on Sunday morning. Because they know they're going to see you and your smile. Maybe your gift is a sense of humor. Right, Sally? Yeah, sense of humor. But, but you know, that's a blessing. The ability to make somebody laugh. Maybe that's your gift. Whether it be here or at home or at your workplace. And so... We're all necessary, Paul's talking about. You know, it's easy for us to think that, hey, the only important people are those that are up front. Would somebody please say no? Shake your head, please. I mean, don't get me wrong. We love the musicians. We love the work. We love their singing. We love Aaron. We love all of me, right? Say yes. Yeah. Okay, thank you. I needed that. Okay. But, but the reality is, is hey, that, that would be the default. The person that we see up front, the important person this afternoon, you know, would be the person giving the, you know, the opening prayer and, and the person out there, you know, giving the speech for the graduates. Can we just say something, all of us, because we graduated? Um, do you remember anything that the keynote speaker said at your graduation? Okay. Not one word. So just so you know, if you don't remember a word, it's okay. Um, that's not the big thing. But we need to be in awe, right, of, of everybody there because they had a part to play. And, and that's what Paul's talking about, every part's important. Now, I don't know about you, how many of you would love to be a heel? How many of you would love to be a butt of the joke? Those are important parts, people. One of you has got to choose to be a heel. Okay? You know? And, 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 a, and a little toe. How many of you want to be the little toe? Oh, I want to be the big toe. Right? But those are all important parts of the body. Or a knee joint, right? Or an ankle. Or an elbow. The only thing I remember about an elbow is they hurt when somebody gives you one on the basketball court. I don't want to be an elbow. All of those things. But yet Paul is saying, you know what? Every single part is important. You may not think you're important. But every single one of you here today is important. You know, we see the drawings in the back, and Tina talked about hey, just how amazing it is to be where we are and to begin in the next four weeks or so, begin to move dirt and, and begin the building process. And we're here today through the work of the Holy Spirit. It's unbelievable, but every one of us has a part to play. Every one of us. The second thing is membership means that we're all different. Did you hear Paul begins by saying that we are all baptized by one spirit so as to form one body. Not two bodies, not three bodies, not ten. One body. Jews, Gentiles, slaves, free. He just named the whole known world at that time. Because you were either a Jew or you were everybody else, a Gentile. You were either free or you were a slave. And he just covered it all. And he said, all of us are part of the body. But I don't know about you, what, you know, if we were all the same, if we were all squares, Painted green and white. 
Somebody's laughing at me. Um, showing my true colors. Um, you know, how exciting would that be? I don't know. Get pretty boring. I'm going to come to church and you all look alike, you all dress alike, you all talk alike, <laughs> and you're all the same height and the same trim. Some of you are like, nope. And I go, man, that doesn't work. We're all different. Because we've all got different gifts. And, and, and but we're all different, but here's the key. We've got to work together. You know, we talked about unity, being unified. And, and you know what? We've got to work together. According to the gifts we have been given. Here's a third thing. Membership means that everything we say or do is based upon Scripture. And it's based upon what Paul writes following chapter 12. You see, Paul says, and yet I will show you a most excellent way. Listen to what he says. And many of you have probably heard this chapter, chapter 13. He says, if I speak in the tongues of men or angels, but do not have love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. He says, I can have the gifts of prophecy and teaching and all these gifts that we tend to elevate. He said, but if I don't have love, I have nothing. I have nothing. And so this, this love that we're supposed to have as a body, as a member in the body of Christ, as, as somebody who claims Christ as their Lord and Savior. And then the question is, you know, what does that look like? And, and the third, last thing is today is, hey, a member needs to be a functioning membership, church membership. Now, what does that look like? I don't know about you, but I think sometimes that's the piece we forget. You know, first of all, we talked about it, Paul talks about it earlier in chapter 12. He says, every one of us is an important, we all have gifts. Some of us, we may have a few more gifts. We're a little bit more talented. That's okay. But we all have gifts. The challenge is, is we have to be functioning members of the body of Christ. What does that look like? I gave you, all of you, a piece of puzzle. Take out your puzzle pieces. Now here's the thing. Is a corner piece more important than a middle piece? Yes. <laughs> Spoken like somebody who puts puzzles together, right? They want to get the corners first, and then they want to get the edge done, and then they can begin to put the puzzle together. But let it just go. I mean, you know, maybe you're one of those people that likes to start with all the red pieces, and you know, if it's a big red truck, you're going to put all those together first. And that's okay, right? Um, and then you're going to put the edge together later. Now, I, I tend to be an edge person, so, I, you know, I kind of think the corner piece is the most important piece. But that's not true. So I need you to do something for me. I need you to stand up. Because we need to be functioning members. Hold up the puzzle pieces. <laughs> okay, here's the deal. I need you to go back to the blue table back there. And I need you to start putting your pieces together. Get this is, this, this, this <laughs> only a hundred pieces, and I have great confidence that you all can figure this out. Because this is what it means to be part of the body of Christ. Is that while I may have a piece, somebody's going to come up to me and, hey, we're going to figure out what my piece goes to and how it works. Now, I have a corner piece. So, you know, I'm probably trying to get back there because it's definitely a little nervous. I don't get that edge piece piece down. What's our orientation here? 
don't know. I got it. Is this the top? Let's make this the top. Oh, you're the bottom. Oh, yeah. Is that the owl? Is this 
Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, there's your turn. Somebody's got the, um, the yeah, honey Yeah, Emily! That was on the floor. Oh, I can't imagine doing a thousand We got a mouse. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, I do. Right. Right. It might be a rabbit. Yellow yeah. mouse. It's a rabbit. Yeah, I can't even. He's above Winnie, whatever he's going last. I think that's safe. Right there, right there. Right there, right there. No, not quite. That's quite. Close. But if that is, it's just down. 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 It's not that big, is it? No. There's another branch over here. That's where that other thing is. Yeah. Well, now let's bring this all together here. Put that in here. That goes to there. There we go. That goes there. Oh, wait, I'm covering up. Oh, there you go. It's small. It's making sense now. That goes to there. There's an end. Here's an end piece. That's real small. Does or does it? Or whatever. I don't think it's going to stack it out, but it'll go very close. All right.
to work together, and, and guess what? A 100-piece puzzle took less than 12 minutes. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. And we all work together. And, and that's really what Paul is talking about is, and we're going to talk more about this as we you know, enter into this series, is, hey, what does it mean to use our gifts? We're kind of like those puzzle pieces. Everyone's a little bit different. But boy, when they fit together, we've got a beautiful picture of food and all his friends, right? And I'm just sitting here going, how cool is that? Imagine that as we begin to build. <laughs> and every one of our gifts are important. As we open the doors, every one of us has a role to play and a talent to share. And we're all part of the puzzle that's going to be this picture that's First Church. And that's the exciting thing. Here's the question, though. If you're not a member, my question to you is, why? And why not? Why wouldn't you want to be part of something that God's doing? Why wouldn't you want to be part of this picture? And so that's something for those of you that are maybe not a member of the church. My question to you is, you know, wherever that is for you, because we have visitors here today, Hey, why aren't you? And if you'd like to talk about it, if you've got some questions, maybe you've got some experiences, uh, or maybe you're just wondering and, and you're a little nervous and uncertain, um, you think you got to have this Bible memorized, cover to cover? No. But, but you're willing to work together like you just did to create something that's unbelievably beautiful because it's the Holy Spirit at work in us that's doing the making the picture. And we're just, we just get to play our parts. That's my invitation to you today. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you today, God, and we just thank you. I thank you for each and every part of the body that is here today. Lord, I thank you for Paul's reminder to us that while we may think sometimes that we are lesser, that our gifts don't matter, that we're not important, that your word says otherwise. And yet, God, we confess today that there are times that uh, we act like our relationship with your bride, the church, is a dating relationship. Or we act like it's a membership in a club and, and, and we think it's all about us and it's all about what we get. And we forget that's not what you would want for us as your church. That you want us to be about loving one another. That you want us to be about sharing the gifts you've given us and serving and reaching out and loving others and sharing the good news of your Son, Jesus Christ, and what He did for us on the cross, that He went and died so that we might have forgiveness of our sins, Lord. And so we just pray, God, that You would forgive us in those times in our lives when we wander, and that You would bring us back, that You would move in us and, and, and give us um, encouragement and move us by the work of Your Spirit to come and be part of the body, part of the church, to be an active, unified member, participating in the work that you are going to do, whether we join you or not. But we get to, Lord. We get to be part of this amazing picture, this plan, and the work that you're doing. And, and Lord, it's a little bit scary. I have to confess that. And yet, God, we just pray that when we get a little bit nervous that you would help us to set aside our fears, Lord, and put our trust in you. We ask all of this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. So at this time, I, I want to just take a moment. We're going to have a time of uh, some announcements, but man, we've got some special guests here today. And so 
Um, I don't know about you, if you've got your bulletins, take out your graduate bulletin handout in there. And, and, and I'm excited. Now, some of you may be going, who are all these people? Um, you know, some of um, Jocelyn is, and her family are members of our church. Um, Jocelyn goes to Coopersville and to be graduating. Um, she, she, I mean, I'm not Jocelyn, Joycelyn. Get, get the pronunciation of a clerk, and so she's not with us today. Um, and then Ashley Powell has been a member of youth group um, for many years, and, and her mom Kelly helps out on Wednesday night with the younger kids. And so Ashley is graduating. She's not with us here as well. They have a home church. But I'm going to ask Jada and Grace to please stand. So. David and Grace are both graduating today. What time is graduation? Two. Yeah, but what time do you have to be there? We have to be there a lot. Uh, okay, so i got to cut this short, right? Okay. No, but let's give it up. I'm excited for the two of you. Uh, extra prayers for, you know, that ceremony because you've got to sit there and... Yeah, that's yeah, that stuff, right? So um, you can be seated. I don't mean that. And, and, and so just special prayers for each of you. Um, you know, big question for you. So where are you going from here now that you're graduating? I'm just going to go into the and kind of see where takes Cool. Jane's going to go into the word deal. Grace, you're going to where? You're going to go to Baker. Awesome. So excited? Cool. Yeah, I think they're both glad to be done and finished with high school. Maybe just a little bit. So here's the thing. We've got some cake uh, to celebrate their graduation. And so after the service, hey, come up and, 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 and congratulate them. Just give them a little bit of love. And then as I told the two of them, we have a Bible for each of them for their journey as they move on in life. And so... Um, we're just so thankful for what God has done. Um, hard to believe you're graduating. I just have to say it, okay? Um, but it's so cool. Um, and then we've got um, some announcements today. And I'm going to, where's Ken? I'm going to have Ken come forward and share some announcements. And while he's doing that, I'm going to invite the praise team to come on up. A uh, couple of announcements. Wally's moved into the uh, Crawford Creek Assisted Living Home and has got himself acclimated there and is doing well. But uh, he does enjoy some visitors from time to time, so keep that in mind. If you're a card player, even better. <laughs> Be prepared to lose. <laughs> so I heard. He pretty much, yeah, don't play for money. <laughs> You're going to owe me. Uh, a couple of other things on a more serious note. Joe James uh, had a nephew that passed away. Aaron Toon. Coon. Aaron Coon. And that uh, is going to be Tuesday at Fellowship Reformed Church from 2 to 8. Visitation time from 2 to 8 in the service on Wednesday at 11, I believe is when that will be. Also, uh, kind of a double-edged sword, but uh, uh, Nell V. Anderson passed away this past Wednesday. Uh, she's moved on to her heavenly home and was free from uh, the problems that this world has for us. And for that, we can say thank you, I guess. Huh? Uh, visitation is going to be Monday afternoon, 4 to 7, and that will be at the funeral home in Coopersville. And then on Tuesday at 11 a.m. will be the service, and that's going to be held at the Coopersville Reformed Church. Uh, luncheon will follow that service, and then in turn uh, at Ravana Township Cemetery following the luncheon. 
and uh, we just want to offer our uh, support and our prayers to Andy and his daughters, Rochelle and Tanya, who are here with him today, and just let them know that we're thinking of them through this time. And I think that's all I have for everybody. So, any other concerns that we'd like to lift up? Or praises? Yes, Charlie. I took a coffee check today from the village, and this is a very giving village. I had no coffee left after six hours. So I'm impressed with the amount of money they gave to the Thank you very much for the veterans, for their service, but also for the generosity of this community. Others? Yes. Ted. A good friend of mine has been sent on our list. He's going in Tuesday to have a Heavenly Father, we come before you on this day, God, and I just thank you. Not only that you have gathered us here today, but Lord, we thank you um, that we get to lift up before you those in need of your comfort and to lift our prayers up to you as well. And so we pray that you would wrap your arms around the James family and the Anderson family in this coming week, Lord, uh, that you would give them the comfort and that they might know and feel your presence in this time. We also ask, Lord, that uh, you would watch over each and every one of the graduates today, not just as they graduate today, but as, as they go about their ways this summer, that you would watch over them and protect them as they begin the, the next part of their journey. While well, one is, part is completed, they are just simply beginning I knew, and I just pray that they would be filled with anticipation and excitement about what stands and is ahead of them, Lord, um, and all the opportunities that exist out there for them. We ask all of this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen.